let me do a formal introduction of our uh, talk. Uh, so uh, this is Scott Wang. I'm from Intel, and also our colleague Yong is also from Intel. Uh, our topic is developing medical ultrasound beamforming application on GPU and FPGA using YAPI. So the following colleagues also contribute to the project equally. Uh, their name is Yong Fa, Yang, and Xu Qing, and Wang Chen. Yeah. So that is the uh, introduction. So uh, because we are we are from China, uh, it's almost midnight, uh, like 11 and a half. So if I fall asleep uh, during the talk, please uh, call me uh, loudly. Yeah, so the table of content uh, is uh, like uh, this. We will introduce the project background. We will also touch on the code migration. And also we will uh, touch on the details of beamforming optimization on GPU and also FPGA. Then we will discuss the result and performance. Um, uh, just now, I think uh, is um, Mike. Uh, Mike is still online. Uh, yeah, I think Mike is still online. So uh, I, I listened to Mike's uh, talk uh, keynotes very carefully, and I re I remember three uh, key items like uh, functional portability, performance transparency, and uh, performance portability. I, I think in our project we proved that. Uh, through the first and second point, uh, which is functional portability and the performance transparency. However, uh, we have difficulty, uh, or rather, the YAPI still is in the in the development stage. Uh, we have the uh, big hurdle to go, um, like uh, to prove the industry that we have the performance portability. If I understand my correctly, yeah. So um, let me go to the background. So what is Supra and why we need it? Supra is an open source project like uh, developed by a German PhD student from the, I think it is uh, from a university uh, in Munich. Um, he developed this uh, project almost on his own, of course on CUDA, right? Because CUDA have been uh, in the industry for almost uh, uh, like 15 years. I think CUDA also grew from a, a toy language into a mission critical language. So I think uh, our competitor or either or our business uh, uh, partner like NVIDIA, they have shown us a very uh, like uh, industry driven GP GPU programming tool set and framework. Um, yeah, with that, uh, I think also I want to highlight this project is open source at GitHub. And also the ultrasound application is a very heterogeneous system because you can see in this system alone, we have uh, 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 like a GPU or FPGA to do the DSP function. And we have also CPU uh, sitting in the system host to do uh, control and also other kind of uh, uh, image processing work. So during our talk, because I have only a single uh, word processor, so I'd rather to listen to your voice. So if you can have any questions, just inter interrupt us. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I have uh, gone through the uh, project background, uh, Ru um, uh, Dr. Rudiger and also uh, the heterogeneous uh, uh, of uh, heterogeneous programming environment of uh, uh, ultrasound. So, what is software before me? So, actually, the industry they are using hardware beamforming algorithm, which is uh, programmed down into FPGA using a very low level hardware language. So, after you program it. It's very hard to maintain, right? Because in the world, right, we have a much, much less FPGA engineer, professional FPGA engineer than software engineer. So in our concept, we want to prove that with YPI programming framework, we can provide software programming programmer a capability which they can make use of in uh, it in the uh, medical ultrasound application. And uh, we can 
allow OEMs, right, the brand um, makers, to hire engineer easily, and also to uh, do their system uh, design, redesign, iteration quick, much much quickly than hardware beam bombing. So that is why we highlight the software beam bombing. Okay, so with the code migration, I will turn this to our colleague, uh, Wang Yong. So in order to support uh, Yong, uh, because uh, I will keep my, uh, uh, keep my video on, uh, unless uh, uh, the audience say uh, the voice quality dropped uh, so much. Yeah. So uh, Yong, I will mute myself, but I will keep my video on to support you. Go ahead, Yong. Thanks, Scott. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I will introduce the uh, uh, code migration optimization on GPU and LPG or beam forming algorithm. Uh, let's ask, get started. Uh, hi, Scott. Oh, yeah. That's, that's okay. Uh, as you may know, uh, Intel MPR provides a data parallel computability tool to help developers uh, migrate uh, existing CUDA code to MPR code. The basic uh, migration flow uh, is that the DPC team will take a CUDA uh, code and import and migrate its uh, library property to DPC++ code. Currently, the tool can migrate about uh, 18 to 90 percent uh, of uh, CUDA language to uh, DPC++ plus plus code. Uh, in, our, in our case, uh, nearly 89% of CUDA language features were migrated successfully. Uh, this tool can also add columns into migrated files to help a developer manually mo modify code to complete the migration and achieve a better performance. In, in our project, we totally migrate uh, 28 files, and it only uh, takes minutes to finish the whole migration process. Uh, it really uh, saves, saves a lot of time uh, for us. Uh, DPC++ is a quite a new language for most of us, but it won't be difficult for C++ program to pick it up quickly. This table is a summary of APIs in migrated DPC++ code. Most of these APIs are quite easy to understand. Uh, for developers, developers who know concept of uh, OpenCL, it will be easy to understand the creation uh, of uh, parallel directives uh, such as uh, these directives. Mm. Here are some examples which, which we need to manually modify. Uh, the first one is a CUDA event object. Uh, the DPC tool assumes the CUDA event object is used to uh, measure the CUDA kernel function execution time. Uh, and it may make the CUDA event to a SQL event. Uh, it also has a C++ time, time measurement uh, library API. Uh, but in our case, we don't use these APIs to measure time. So we can just uh, remove this API. Mm. The second uh, example is to uh, create a stream in uh, CUDA. In DPC++, the stream concept uh, is replaced by the SQL queue uh, concept. We, we also need to modify the migrator code to make sure create a SQL queue uh, with the correct uh, property. Uh, in the older version of MPI, the, the CUDA thrust library uh, cannot, can't be migrated by DPCT. Mm. So we need to rewrite the thrust register APIs. The DPCT uh, will also uh, insert the comments in, in the migrated code to remind the developer to uh, modify thrust related uh, 
guys. So, uh, this list uh, uh, are the examples of successfully migrated APIs. Mm -hmm. The three of the APIs are used to allocate the uh, CPU memory, shared memory, and the GPU memory. Mm, now let's look at the uh, beamforming code migration, code op optimization uh, on Intel GPU. Uh, we first uh, introduced the beamforming algorithm and then give some uh, optimization tips on GPU. Uh, this figure uh, shows the basic principle of ultrasound imaging mo mode. The finger, the figure in uh, in the left shows the one uh, pause echo process for the uh, sensor M. And the time it received the reflect reflect ultrasound signal is T plus R and divided by uh, C zero, and uh, C zero is the average speed of sound travels inside a human body. And, uh, for each of the sensor, <coughs> the that the uh, delta t is different uh, due to the uh, due to the sensor's different uh, location. Uh, let's look at the the right figure. Uh, for one reflect the point, uh, we need uh, multiple sensors to receive signal from it. So each sensor's input uh, should be summed up. Before we sum up all this all all these sensors input, uh, we first should uh, uh, align the uh, align the signals from each sensor. Mm. And this is the basic uh, principle of um, delay and sum algorithm, which is the most widely widely used uh, algorithm in uh, ultrasound beamforming. Mm. In our project, uh, we per we process the input signal in offline way. Uh, that means the, in, the input uh, the input data were captured and saved in desk, not received um, directly from the sensor. The input data is uh, stored in three-dimensional way. This picture shows the data used to produce one, one frame of output uh, beamforming image. Uh, the beam, oh, oh, sorry, I, I was attempting this. Uh, the beamforming delay and sum algorithm can be implemented in a single thread method. It's a nested follow-up. Uh, the, auto, the outermost follow-up iterates at, over a uh, scanline number, which means how many pause echo processes in an image. Uh, the second, uh, a uh, follow up at the uh, num um, loop at the number of samples, which means in a pause echo process, how many samples were captured. For the innermost uh, uh, follow up, it calculates one pixel of output image. We can see that the output, the outermost uh, and the second follow up uh, represent the column direction and the row direction in output image. Respectively, and the most importantly, uh, these two follow up can be calculated independently. This means we can do parallel computation in GPU. Uh, this picture shows the original beamforming implementation on GPU. As you can see, uh, each worker item calculates uh, one pixel in output. Uh, image. The picture shows how the first column was calculated. Inside a work item, the program still needed to iterate over channel to calculate the delay value, fetch raw data according to the delay value, and uh, sum all the data. This uh, iteration can be further optimized. Uh, the first optimization 
is that we use, we calculate two pixels uh, in our work item, and we use a SQL, SQL wipe. We use SQL wipe to reduce the uh, delay and the delay, delay and some acceleration number. This is a SQL wipe we use. Um, first, uh, we use the SQL wipe to do manually manually vectorization to calculate eight delay values and fetch eight data uh, in a single in a single acceleration. Uh, this is the uh, optimized code I was using a uh, SQL wipe. Uh, uh, it can be uh, can be get from uh, GitHub. Uh, the second, uh, the second uh, mm, optimization is that uh, we use the SQL web directives to uh, function uh, multiple data once. The original function call, um, original function only function and return a single flow of data. Uh, after optimization, we can function eight flow of data each uh, function call. Mm. We, are, we also use cache to improve performance. Uh, before the kernel function starts, we copy the uh, file data into GPU memory. This can increase the uh, cache hit rate during the data fetch. This is also the um, source code. Uh, after the optimization, we can use uh, return to help us uh, to help us do uh, visualization. Uh, for the optimization tool, we we use return to look at the detail of the details. It shows the ca cache miss rate get down um, before and after the optimization. Uh, here, uh, here is our last uh, optimization is using ECMD directives. Um, for delay and sum, Algorithm. We can use ECMD to rewrite the kernel function. Uh, the main idea is that is that uh, in each work item, uh, it can calculate more pixel in output image. It's, uh, in our case, we calculate uh, 32 pixels in one work item. Uh, this method this method reduces the number of work item and increases the uh, cache hit rate. Due to the due to the memory access method. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, sorry, you. Uh, let's pause here for uh, a moment. Um, uh, we wonder if uh, the audience have questions, uh, and also uh, while the audience is forming up question, I I like to recap uh, what uh, Yong have said because Yong uh, probably uh, is uh, is a bit nervous. So. Uh, what we have done, right, from CUDA into one API is just one switch of uh, our uh, DPC compatibility tool. So we have uh, proved that uh, given a medium-sized project, we almost can turn the project into a runnable one API project uh, with, uh, like, say, one week's time. Then we, we, we can do optimization on top of the, like, uh, migrated code. And also for the optimization technique uh, mentioned by Yong, right? Uh, we have shown that uh, YAPI is uh, provide us sufficient low-level programming uh, uh, technique, uh, such as uh, uh, such as uh, uh, eSIMD and also cache um, uh, uh, cache uh, some kind of uh, cache arrangement and also some other optimization technique, so that uh, neither Yong nor me are medical ultrasound engineer. However, with almost uh, one quarter of time, we almost can complete some kind of a prototype, right? If you are the OEM, now, now we are talking to OEMs, we are getting close to land one API project with our uh, POCs, right? We ask customers to migrate their, uh, not only CUDA code, probably they only have a low level programming code, or OpenCL code. However, however, they can try the concept using YAPI and onto the Intel GP, uh, GPU and uh, also FPGA 
uh, will be mentioned by you later. Yeah. So uh, I, I I saw uh, so, uh, David and uh, Julian uh, have some uh, comments. Um, so Julian, do, do you want us to take the question now or uh, to complete the talk? Uh, what do you think from time perspective? Uh, yeah, uh, let's finish the presentation at first. And at last, uh, sure. let's, yeah, let's take all of this. Uh, next so, question. You are the moderator, I forgot. No, <laughs> so no, go no. ahead. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Scott. Uh, so, uh, uh, now let's look at the beamforming implementation on FPG. Um, uh, the memory is the DPC plus plus code can also uh, target to FPG with the rewrite of the kernel functions. Uh, the FPG code will test on Intel Dev Cloud. Um, with the area 10 FPG. As you can see, uh, compared to Gen, Gen 9 uh, GPU, FPG can achieve better performance for the uh, beamforming algorithm. Uh, now we will uh, we'll look at the code detail of FPG uh, implementation. Uh, the first thing we do is to uh, shuffle the raw data store pattern. The store pattern method is still uh, three dimensional but we exchange the sample and the uh, channel, channel order. This picture shows the uh, data store order before and, uh, before and after a uh, shuffle operation. Uh, this picture shows the computation pattern of FPG implementation of beamforming. The main idea is that uh, we use two local buffer to load the uh, uh, scanline data in a ping pong ma manner. For example, for computa computation uh, of the first column column in output uh, image, we use uh, use buffer to, uh, to to fetch raw data and do uh, delay and uh, some operation. In the meantime, we load the next uh, uh, scanline data into into idle buffer. When the first col column com computation all finished, um, we then use the idle buffer to calculate the second uh, uh, column and we load the third uh, uh, scanline data into uh, this buffer. Um, in, in, in this way, we calculate the output image column by column. Uh, okay, this uh, the data um, shows the information algorithm description. Uh, this, pa this page shows the uh, same data of GPU and LPG. Uh, we can see that uh, the FPG code is also written in a uh, high level language uh, and some Intel, uh, ex Intel extension. Uh, this gives a powerful tool for software being developer to program the FPG. Uh, okay, I, I think the uh, code detail part is finished. Uh, I'll give you back to uh, Scott. Uh, thanks. Hi, Scott. Sorry, I'm... yeah. Uh, thanks, Yong, uh, uh, for the detailed introduction. Uh, on this page, I want to highlight that um, don't be uh, don't be afraid to tackle uh, workload uh, by using IPGA because with OpenCL or one API, right? We have sufficient low-level programming technique, uh, which is implemented in high-level language to uh, employ. Uh, I mean, to make use of the IPGA hardware architecture. However, this is not to say IPGA uh, engineer are out of job. Actually, we create more opportunity for IP, IPGA good, uh, engineer because they can be the key component or key uh, stakeholders in the team, right? To provide the hardware uh, knowledge to our software engineer. Then our software engineer can lay down all the uh, trivial code, right? To make, uh, make it, uh, then the hardware engineer can provide the IPGA specific, specific uh, attribution, attributions. 
Yes, so let's go to the results and performance and also future works. Um, so um, uh, we are engineers, right? We like numbers. We like real product results. However, this stack is a PDF. Uh, we are showing a PDF. I cannot show the animation. Uh, I think uh, you can somehow uh, get either me or Yong to show you the original uh, PPT, right? Uh, so show the animation. So, so from the left to right, we are actually uh, computing the ultrasound beamform image out of the sound wave, right? Uh, tra uh, tra transmitting, then reflect back, then do the de delay and sound. Then you can see the picture is getting clearer uh, from left to right. And also due to the fact um, the ultrasound image is all reconstructed noise, noise um, uh, redundant uh, picture so that um, the best you can see is depends on your algorithm to reduce the artifact and also the noise in the image. So that is the, uh, the, the, this introduction, uh, the, this page. So all the code, right? Even you don't get hold of uh, the IPG hardware, you can try it on Intel Dev Cloud. On the Intel Dev Cloud, you have plenty of uh, hardware node for you to uh, dispose. And also our code is ready to run on Dev Cloud. So enough of the advertisement. Let's look at some of the real hard data. So from the left to right, you can see uh, we have pretty old uh, Intel hardware, which is UHD 630, uh, which is probably the internal graphic running on your uh, computer, notebook computer. So we have the Tiglic Iris XE, right? The new, the latest uh, 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 core graphic on our latest CPU. So you can see the numbers drop significantly, almost half, right? So uh, the, the unit here is uh, millisecond. Uh, so 13.966 is the 13.66 uh, millisecond, the time duration to form one frame, right? So we can see from left to right, we have due to the uh, more powerful hardware and also uh, significant improved parallel architecture, we have much smaller number. Um, so DG1 is our discrete graphic. You can see due to the I mean, probably uh, EU numbers or probably the power envelope uh, uh, allowance, we can still have smaller numbers. So I want to highlight an interesting part of uh, uh, the performance data on A10. You can see uh, the four stages on the previous GPU, we in order to form one frame, we must add all the stages together. However, on FPGA, we have the pipeline, uh, perfect pipelining. We can almost say the longer stage, if you design the pipeline correctly, the longest stage will be the, the longest uh, time to process one frame. Yeah, so, uh, and also uh, you can compare this uh, result with other vendors especially MB's uh, hardware's performance number. We won't list them here to <laughs> avoid some dispute, right? Uh, who is better? Uh, because our, our our talk here is just to induce ideas. So uh, in case you are, you have, um, uh, you, are, you are curious, you can go to this link to dig out more numbers. Um, so with that, um, I will turn to Yong, right? To talk about the pipeline the, some of the future works like a pipeline analysis on the IPGA hardware. Yong, uh, go ahead. Uh, okay, uh, thanks. Uh, <clears throat> uh, for, for the um, pipeline, we can, we can use the um, pipeline um, technology to do further optimization as the image shows. Uh, we don't need to uh, calculate all pixels in uh, in in the uh, kernel functions before starting another kernel. Uh, the pipe uh, component can be used to uh, pass pixels uh, between kernels. Uh, we can use this um, task level pipeline to 
uh, reduce the total computation time uh, for the four uh, uh, for the four um, kind of functions in, in our application. Um, and this this work uh, is um for, is for uh, the next uh, uh, next next uh, uh, ne uh, next phase of our um, uh, optimization. That's uh, yeah. I, I just want to uh mention uh we can use uh pamper to do um uh, to do the pipeline optimization. Sure. Uh, Yong, uh, let me switch to the next page. Uh, then we are almost done. Uh, on the, uh, Yon, do you want me to introduce this uh, really quick? Yeah, yeah. Go okay, ahead. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, just now I mentioned the German researcher, right? He had laid down the foundation for our project. Then we do the migration and also optimization on Intel hardware. Actually, if you want to try more uh, technique, you want to try something new on your own, uh, you are all welcome to try some of the component here, right? Uh, to follow the same uh, procedure highlighted by Yong and also to do the some of the optimization tweak. Uh, I mentioned by uh, like uh, Yong and also our PE, uh, Mike, uh, previously. Uh, so uh, we just, um, I just want to highlight neither me nor Yong are the medical ultrasound company from the um, ultrasound company. However, we can turn this open source project into some runnable uh, demos on our Intel hardware. I'm not saying we are very near to production level. However, we want to expose this possibility. The possibility are we suddenly have one programming interface, just like mentioned by Mike before, right? Functional portability, performance transparency. Uh, we can suddenly using one language to tackle the problem on different hardware, like a, a Intel Core graphic, discrete graphic, and also FPGA. For performance portability, sorry, we have showed this on core graphic and uh, discrete graphic. However, we cannot we, we cannot make use of the existing uh, YAPI release to achieve this performance portability on FPGA because the hardware architecture are too much different, right? However, I think for the vendor, if they want to design high-end ultrasound machine, they must use uh, still use FPGA. Um, I just want to do a simple advertisement. The FPGA have a much lower F max compared with uh, GPU, right? They are mostly in 500 megahertz and below. So you can have much smaller form factor, much smaller power supplier to the system. And also uh, the other possibility I want to show to you is the, the point I mentioned uh, about. We are empowering software engineer to do much greater scope, heterogeneous programmability on the real time, real application. Yeah, so that is the two possibility we highlighted. I think engineer are very, uh, almost all, all around the world, they are all smart. I think uh, YPI uh, mentioned by Mike before, right? They have give us a tool, right? To, although I don't understand, uh, I, fifty percent of the mic talk. However, I think we did a, a fantastic job, and I, I mean, I claim it to be fantastic to show uh, the world we have a POC ready. Yeah. So uh, with that, I think uh, we came to the final sum summary uh, summarization page. Uh, just now, I mentioned the unified programming framework language to implement medical algorithm acceleration on Intel hardware. Uh, however, I think Mike mentioned, right, uh, for NV or AMD, they have their own implementation. We hope, or just I hope, right, somebody can can uh, make the other branch work perfectly on uh, Intel, uh, uh, other hardware. And also, uh, we implement this algorithm on X, XGPU, FPGA. We show the possibilities, right? And also, we can show that with OpenVINO, another 
framework, we can probably distribute DSP function and also AI inference function on a perfect system like ultrasound to make to make the system run in harmony, right? Reduce the power in uh, reduce the cost, improve the performance. Then we also with with Mike with our lots of PEs, a lot of engineers. I think Intel we have the commitment to support the future acceleration hardware. Uh, with that, I think we are going into the end of our session. Thanks for your listening and your time. Uh, let's go to the uh, Q&A. I think probably our topic is very easy. I just see a few uh, questions. Yeah. Bing. Yeah, many thanks to Scott and uh, you. Yeah, very interesting talk and very interesting work. And we have three, I think three quick questions here. So the first one is from David. And what steps were taken to get the CUDA product into the what the one uh, API product? Yeah, I, I will leave to you to answer. Uh, yeah, uh, Scott, can you uh, uh, go back to uh, page seven? Okay, let me go really quick. Uh, how, how fast I can click the mouse? Ah. Seven. Okay, almost there. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the answer is on uh, below this uh, picture. Uh, you can see the uh, migration command. We just only use this command to do the migration. Uh, you take uh, the uh, MPI provider a uh, command line uh, to you just the uh, 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 put a code file and the input, and it will migrate a uh, uh, DPCP CPP, uh, file and output. Uh, it's it's very easy and uh, it's uh, less than one minute to uh, finish this uh, command. Yeah. Great. Great. Uh, yeah. Actually, the second question is from Julian. I mean, uh, so uh, <clears throat> he, he he's just wondering uh, one. Short code includes still the CUDA calls. So, I mean, uh, w w was that intentional or? Uh, yeah, but uh, I think uh, he, he, mm, he means uh, uh, some uh, help function in CUDA. Uh, for this kind of function, it, uh, it won't change the, it, it won't change the uh, function name. Uh, but uh, but uh, mm, this, uh, this, this help function, you, you may don't need to in uh, uh, code. It, uh, most of us uh, we, we just uh, abandon it. Or um for some of us some of us this uh, API uh, function we, we can um, rewrite it. Yeah. And, but uh, it will not change the CUDA to, to SQL or to uh, DPC plus. Great, great. So yeah, the last one is from uh, Tarek. Is the utilization of uh, FPGA with one API limited to OpenCL synthesis? How does one go about optimizing the design for, for performance if, uh, if necessary? Uh, yeah, I, I think uh, one API is uh, is based on um, C++ and some extension, so it's uh, uh, from the code, uh, from the code level, you can see a lot of difference. You don't need to uh, uh, write your kernel function and the host function in uh, different uh, files. Um, uh, so it's 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 not uh, limited to. Uh, I think it's not limited on OpenCL. It's give you more high level uh, ability to program FPG. So it's. More uh, easier use uh, than uh, OpenCL. Uh, from my uh, my opinion, yeah. Um, I think uh, the um, optimization uh, optimization tips uh, 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 used in OpenCL. We can also we can also use in MyMPI. Um, actually, uh, MyMPI is uh, roughly is, is a new uh, new tool. So there is not um, too many uh, document and OpenCL. So in our yeah. development, we have we we often reference to the OpenCL programming guide or optimization document to 
people do the optimization. So, mm -hmm. so I think the yeah. program uh, concept is, is the same. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, let, let me. Uh, yeah, I, I will add on to Yong's uh, answer. Uh, I think Tarek uh, uh, probably I'm not an uh, open CR synthesis uh, expert. However, we will take your question back and uh, study it. <laughs> we uh, don't be a stranger. Uh, search me in the LinkedIn. I, I, let me connect, and uh, we can uh, connect by emails after that. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, to general audience, if you guys have any further questions, please leave it here. And uh, uh, Scott and you uh, welcome to answer these questions uh, just uh, uh, on the chat, uh, chat box. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for this yeah, interesting talk. Yeah, great. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah.